everybody. Um, okay, so I'm not sure how many of you were here last session, which was about three weeks ago. Um, but for the class, I'd like you to have um, a chair. It can be a dining room chair, a, a couple of blankets or towels, two bricks or some books, and a strap. Um, it could be a belt. It's just something that you can put around your feet and hold. Okay, so if you're close to a wall, that's ideal because we may use the wall. It's not compulsory. Um, anyway, let's see how we go. Let's get started. So um, your mat now is parallel to the screen. And hopefully your screen is not on the floor so you don't have to keep looking down. All right. So it, let's start with child's pose. So we'll have the big toes touching and buttocks to the heels. If your buttocks is not reaching right down to the heels, then that's okay. You can squeeze in the blanket if you've got one handy. Otherwise, just walk yourself away. Keep working the buttocks down towards the heels. And then walk the hands away. Keep the fingers spreading. Keep the outer elbows in. And then you can allow the head to come down towards the mat. Now spread the fingers and press down into the palms to work your buttocks back towards the heels. Keep the outer elbows in, so you don't want to be winging the elbows out. There's a lot of support that comes in this pose from the arms. So the outer elbows stay in, and the outer shoulders move down towards the mat. It is an opposing action there. What often happens is, as you bring the elbows in, the outer shoulders want to lift up, but we want to keep them moving down to keep the upper back nice and soft and spreading, not to create any tension there. And just be there, bring your head down, bringing the head down brings you into the practice, into the zone. Normal breaths. And then walk your hands back. And then come up. Okay, let's come up to standing. And we're going to start with the half downward dog to the chair. Have the chair. Um, the back of the chair facing your mat. Have the back two legs on the mat so that it doesn't slide away. You're going to have the palms on the back of the chair. Step away. Extend through the elbows. And keep the outer shoulders down. Just like we did now in the child's pose, you're going to have the same action with the arms. The other thing to notice here is that you want your heels directly under the buttocks. So we're not walking the legs out too far, and we're not keeping them in too close. Keep your arms long, keep the trunk lengthening, heels directly under the buttocks. Check the outer elbows are in, outer shoulders down, and keep the spine lengthening. You might need to just nudge yourself a little bit further back with your heels as your spine starts to lengthen. And now in that position, just look down at your feet. Check that the big toes are in towards your center line and that your kneecaps now are lifted and the thigh muscles are active. And now bend the knees, step forward. And just facing your chair, just stand there in Tadasana. All right, we're going to repeat that. Step yourself away. Lengthen through the fingers, outer elbows in, outer shoulders down, big toes in towards the center line and the kneecaps lift. Just normal breathing, feel the spine lengthen without any tension or gripping in the trunk. And now bend the knees, step forward and come back to Tadasana. Okay, now for some of you, um, so we, for some of you, if you can get yourself all the way down to the mat, 
for Ardhamur Kushvanasana, downward facing dog. We're going to do that. Otherwise, you can use a chair. Just turn it around, hold the sides of the chair, and step yourself away, and just keep the heels under the buttocks, and just be there, and find the action in the arms. It's the same action that we're going to follow through with. Okay? So, if you need a chair, use a chair. Otherwise, have the palms down onto the mat and step your feet away for Ardha Mukha downward facing dog. You'll hear me use Sanskrit words. Don't worry if you don't know what I'm talking about. It does sink in eventually. Now spread the fingers. Press down into the knuckles and lengthen up through the wrists, outer elbows in. And now bend the knees if you're in Ardha Mukha and come into child's pose. And we're going to do that four times. And if you're in just to the chair, you can just come out of the pose by bending your knees, stepping forward and then going back into the pose. All right, come up onto the shins, bring the buttocks up, tuck the toes under, lift the pelvis. Ardha Mukha And we'll do it without much thinking. Let's do it with a bit more um, speed as opposed to intelligence, just to get ourselves warmed up. Tuck toes under, raise heel, uh, pelvis. Ardha Mukha Bend the knees, buttocks to the heels, spread the fingers, press into the palms. Bring the head down for child's pose. Come up, buttocks up, tuck toes under. Ardha Mukha Svanasana. Come up onto the toes, bend the knees. Buttocks back towards the heels. And one more time, tuck toes under. Ardha Mukha Svanasana. Bend the knees. And child's pose. Okay, let's come up into standing and uh, we're going to um, start with a few arm variations. Have a strap, have it over your left shoulder to start. Have your feet in the hip width distance apart. And then you're going to extend down through the fingers. Check that the big toes are in towards your center line. Kneecaps lift, buttocks down. And then raise your, um, you know what? Sorry, good ladies. I'm just going to switch my volume off here because I've got a repeat happening. Um, okay. So have the feet hip width apart. We're going to start with the right arm. Take the right arm out to the side. Turn the palm to face behind. And then scoop it up behind the back. Now you're going to take your uh, left hand and you're going to just grab hold if you can reach. Don't worry if you can't. And you're just going to grab hold of the forearm. But if you can reach the elbow, take hold of it and move it in towards your midline, towards your spine and a little bit up the back, just where you can. Then you're gonna release your left hand and you're gonna raise that left arm and you're gonna extend up and take it slightly back, press into the feet, keep the tailbone down as you take a slight back bend, bend that top elbow and then grab hold of the, the other hand. If you can't grab hold of the fingers, Grab hold of the belt. Now check that both shoulders are softening down. Outer shoulder moves forward. So the um, left outer shoulder forward. The left elbow up towards the ceiling. And both shoulders stay down. And then release. Both arms. Let's put the belt on the other shoulder. If you think you need the belt, if you know you don't, don't worry. <clears throat> and now we're gonna take the left arm out to the side. 
turn the palm to face behind, scoop the arm out behind the back, take hold of the elbow with the other hand, and draw it in towards your spine as you can creep that um, left hand further up the spine. Then take your right arm up. Take a slight back bend as you extend away through the wrist, press down into the feet, and then bend that top elbow to reach back. And then you can come back to center, bring the trunk back to center once you've got hold of your other hand or belt. And again, check shoulders soft and down, outer shoulder forward, top elbow up. And then release. And then we can let go of the strap. And then come back to Tadasana. So having the feet slightly apart, big toes in towards the center line, kneecaps lifted. So spread down into the feet, lift the kneecaps, and then draw the tailbone down as you extend down through the fingertips. Keep the side waist tall, all the way up into the armpit chest. So we need to get this pose active and working and get a good understanding of this pose because it's the foundation for all of our yoga postures. And it's the foundation for everything that we're going to do in a day. So keeping that, those front thighs up and active is very important. Now, keeping the action in the legs, raise the arms, keep the elbows firm. So the outer elbows come sharply in. We're not bending the elbows here. Extend through the wrists, extend through the fingers, keep the shoulders down, and raise the arms to your capacity. Just look at your arms. If they've started to bend, just bring them down to where you can keep the elbows straight. Outer elbows in. And then release. All right, if you have a wall, you might want to use the wall here. So you can uh, have your back to all the way into the wall or just have yourself um, close enough so that you can touch the wall with your fingers. Now we're going to have the um, big, the, sorry, the inner edges of the feet now touching. We're going for Vrikshasana, which is commonly known as the tree pose. And in order to get the balancing here, we've got to really um, feel that action in the standing leg. So you're going to take the weight into your right leg, lift up the left, and bring that heel in towards the perineum. Now, it may not get all the way up to the top of your leg. That's okay. It can be further down the thigh. It can be below the knee. Just avoid having it on the knee. Lift the kneecap, hips level. Keep the side waist tall. And now you can have your hands to the, the cupboard, I mean to the wall behind you, or just palms facing down, uh, facing forward, fingers extending away. Keep the armpit chest lifted, collarbones broad, so that you can get your breath. Keep lifted in that standing leg. And then raise the arms up. Udva Hastasana. You, you don't have to bring the arms up. If you're using the wall, keep your hands to the wall. And then release. And take the foot down. Come back to Tadasana. Now take the weight into the left leg. Bend up the right, bring that right heel up towards the perineum. Keep that standing leg firm. Really lift up into that left kneecap. Check both hips are level, sideways tall. And extend out through the hands, through the wrists all the way to the fingertips. Palms face forward. As you lift up in the standing leg, move the tailbone down as the knee 
And in this case, it's your right knee moves back towards the wall behind you. And now you've either got your hands to the wall or you're just going to be there, free balance, or you can take your arms up. Keep the shoulders down, keep the outer elbows in. Check that the hips stay level. And then release the arms, release the leg, and come back to Tadasana. All right, Trikonasana, standing in the middle of your mat, have the feet in the edges touching, hands in front of the chest, bend the knees, and if you've got uh, some knee issues or ankle issues or hip, um, it's better just to step out in these postures, otherwise we jump. So bend the knees, step or jump the feet apart. We're gonna to go to the right side first. So bring the left foot in. Bend the right knee and turn the whole of the right leg out. Make sure you've got a nice uh, wide stance here, at least a leg length apart with your feet. Lift up through the side waist, shoulders down, and then take your right hand down to either your um, shin or your ankle or to the floor. Extend up through that top arm, press into that back outer foot as you extend up through the top arm. Now your right waist, we want to lengthen it away from the hip, but we also want to bring it forward. Bring it forward towards me, towards your screen, to open up the chest and look up. Stay working in the legs. Really important here to keep that action in the legs. So pressing into the foot, the outer back, the back foot in the, on the outer edge, and the front foot, you want to press onto the inner edge. Keep the kneecaps lifted. And now stay working in the legs as you raise your right arm up, come up, bend the right knee, foot face forward. We're going to go to the other side. Bring the right foot in, turn the whole of the left leg out. Check your distance. Sometimes we shorten our distance without realizing. Have quite a good um, distance between the two feet. Keep lifted in the kneecaps as you take your left arm down to your shin or ankle or to the floor. Press into that outer back foot, inner back foot down, I mean inner front foot down. And now move the chest up towards the ceiling and you can look up. Check that the kneecaps are lifted and the breath is even. And now stay lifted in the kneecaps, working down into the feet. Raise the left arm up, come up, bend that left knee, foot face forward, hands in front of the chest, bend, feet together. All right, have two breaks. We're gonna go for Pajvakanasana, which is what we did last week as well, last session. Hands in front of the chest, bend, step the feet apart. Let's take hands to waist, bring the left foot in, turn the whole of the right leg out. And now as you can, you're gonna bend this front knee, as you bend that knee, keep the tailbone moving down and forward towards the screen. Keep the side waist tall. So drop that front thigh, Keep the tailbone down and forward, side waist lift, and then take your hand onto your brick. Now your brick can be on a tall setting, or it can be on a medium setting. If you don't need a brick, don't use one. Keep working into that back outer foot. So the left um, foot, the back, the outer foot is pressing down into the mat, and the left inner thigh is lifted. And then raise that top arm up to a vertical. 
and then rotate the shoulder around to extend over and look up past the armpit. Your right elbow can be pressing into your right knee because we need to move that knee back. It has a tendency to come forward and then raise up. Bend that right knee to bring the foot to face forward. Then bring the whole of that right foot in, turn the whole of the right leg out. And bend, as you bend that left knee now, keep the side weights lifted, move the tailbone down and forward. And then take that hand onto the brick or to the floor. Move your right, your left elbow into your left knee as you move the left waist forward and open up the chest. Raise that top arm up to a vertical. Press into that back outer foot. Rotate the shoulder round as you take the arm over and look up. Smooth, even breath. Keep the action in that back leg. So the back outer foot firmly down, the back inner thigh lifts, and the front elbow pressing comfortably into that knee. And then raise up. Bend that left knee, foot face forward, hands in front of the chest, feet together. All right, we're coming for a forward bend. So have your bricks. You may not need bricks. And we're gonna start with the feet just in a hip width distance apart, so not too wide. And you're gonna walk your hands down your legs. Keep the kneecaps lifted and just keep the feet spreading. As you bring the hands, they can come to the bricks or if you don't need the bricks, take them to the floor. I'll just do this from the side. So here what we wanna avoid is we wanna avoid bending in the knees. So we need to keep that action to get the height and the lift all the way up into the thigh creases for our forward bends. And then allow the trunk to lengthen down towards the floor. The back of the neck is long and soft and the feet are spreading. Keep the action in the legs. So kneecaps lift, thigh creases lift, and the trunk lengthens down. See how the trunk here is supported by the action in the legs. We're not gonna go beyond our capacity in a forward bend if we've got that action in the legs. And then raise up. And now we're gonna do a wider forward bend, wider legged forward bend called Prasari Sopadatanasana. So we're gonna have the feet wide. And again, you can have bricks. Have the feet wide, more than a leg length. Okay, as wide as you can without your ankles popping out and check that the big toes stay in towards your center line. Then have your hands to your waist elbows back, lift the sideways, and then lead with the sternum, lead with the chest to come forward. Take the hands onto your bricks or to the floor. Lift the kneecaps. Keeping a concave spine to start, so the um, shoulders move back, the chest moves forward. And the spine is straight. I'll just do this from the side. I think it's easier if you're watching. So the other thing here to note is I don't want to have my buttocks leaning back past my heels. So you might need to walk your hands forward to bring the buttocks in line with the heels. And now come into a full forward bend. So you can walk the hands or take them down onto a lower brick or take them off the brick, just depending on where you're at with it. Or if you didn't, weren't using 
three because you just walk your hands back. Just come into a full forward bend. Keep the lift in the kneecaps. Firmly down into the inner feet. Firmly down into the outer feet. Lift the kneecaps. Lift the thigh creases. And allow the spine to lengthen and soften down. And then walk the hands back to under the shoulders. Take the hands to the waist. Raise up. And then step the feet together. All right, coming down into a seated position. Um, we're going to have our blanket folded in a three-fold position like that. And we're going to sit. You may not need a blanket. See how you go. What we're looking for is when we're sitting in our pose, we'll start in Dandasana. I don't want to see any sort of tilting back or hunching of the spine. So if you can't get that lift, place a support <clears throat> under you. So it could be one blanket, it could be three blankets. Just see what you need in order to get that lift of the spine, lift of the sacrum. That's it. Now bring those back shoulders down and in. So the shoulder blades move down and come into the body. And then extend away through the inner feet. And then keep that lift in the spine, keep the action in the legs as you raise the arms up. Udva Hasasana. And then release. And then you're going to keep that. I'm just turning to face you so I can watch. Again, press down into the thighs. The thighs work down towards the floor. Extend away through the inner legs, so the adductors through to the inner ankles, inner um, heels. Move away. Keep the torso lifted as you raise the arms up. And now keeping that lift in the spine, just hinge forward. Don't come into a full forward bend. Just extend through the elbows, extend through the wrists, all the way to the fingers, keeping the spine long. Keep the back ribs in and the shoulder blades down. Press down into the, the legs. So the inner thighs move down towards the mat. And then release. Keep the lift in the torso, Dandasana, keep the action in the legs. And now we're going to bend the knees, bring the heels in towards the perineum, Baddha Konasana. Once you've got the heels in towards the perineum, you can take your hands onto the mat, just lift the buttocks and just um, scoot it towards the heels and then grab hold of the feet. You can interlock the fingers around the, the toes, the underside of the toes. Now work the knees down towards the mat, but lift the side waists. Lift the side waist tall, shoulders down, and broaden the collarbones. Smooth, even breaths. Baddha Konasana. And then release the legs out. And now if you've got your strap handy, take your strap, place it behind your feet. You're gonna grab hold of the strap again. Um, sorry, we're gonna go back into Urdhva Hastasana arms. So raise the arms up. And as you hinge forward, keep the action in the legs so the inner thighs work down extend away through the heels then grab hold of your strap keep the feet slightly apart shoulder blades down back ribs in i'll just show that from the side you keep working at that keep the action in the legs feet are slightly apart 
back ribs in. So we're not hunching the spine like that. If you are finding that you're doing that, just come up slightly, keeping the elbows long, outer elbows in. And then you can start to walk yourself back towards the feet, just to your capacity. So we're keeping the spine long, shoulder blades down, chest slightly lifted, moving forward and up. Just feel that um, those thigh creases drawing back towards the wall behind you. And as they draw back, work down more into the legs. So the inner thighs press down. And now come into a full forward bend. So here you will slightly bend the spine, but keep the action in the legs. And then raise up and then release. And let's come into a sitting cross-legged position. We're going to uh, take a twist to the right. So take your right hand behind, left hand across. Keep the shoulder blades down. Check that your sacrum is lifted here. So if you have removed the blanket or you need an extra blanket, um, it's good to put that support there to check that you've got that lift. And now you can look past your right shoulder. And then release, come back to center. Take the left hand behind, right arm across. Lift the side waist, inhale as you twist. And when you twist, you can do an exhale. So inhale to lift the spine and twist, exhale. And you can look past your left shoulder. It's more about turning at the waist it's more about the navel twisting than the head. And then come back to center. And we'll do that one more time. Uh, let's take the other cross of the legs. So change your cross leg. Right arm behind, left arm across. Lift the spine, keep the shoulders down. Twist from the navel. Inhale, turn and exhale. Inhale. Lift the spine, turn, exhale. And then come back to center. Take the left, arm, uh, the left arm behind, right arm across. Shoulder blades down, lift the spine, inhale. Turn and twist and exhale. And again, inhale, lift. Turn and exhale. And then come back to centre. All right, so we're going to finish up the class with a, an inversion. Um, we're going to put legs up the wall, and or you, if you don't have a wall handy, you can just have your um, calves onto the chair like this. Have a head blanket um, for under your head. All right, otherwise, if you've got a wall handy, then you're gonna take your mat um, so that it's lengthways perpendicular to your wall and have a head blanket nearby that you can bring under your head. And then to get up to the wall, you scoot the hip all the way into the wall as much as you can, always tilt um, the buttocks into the wall. And then come down onto your forearm and then take your legs up and then scoot the buttocks more into the wall. If you have to bend your knees to get the buttocks to the wall, then you are better off being a little bit away from the wall. And then bring that blanket under your neck. And then just be there, have the arms down by your side. Back of the neck, soft and long. And then just come to your breath here. So just be aware of where you're at with your body, what your body's doing. 
Is your breath quicker than usual? Is it slower? And we really want to start slowing the breath down now into more of a meditative part of the class. <clears throat> but allow it to come naturally. The important thing here is to stay focused and aware of the breath. Now look at your legs, and if your legs are to the wall, check that you've got form in the legs. You want your inner thighs rolling back towards the wall. The kneecaps are slightly lifted, so it's not a gripping pose here. It's more a case of just keeping form. Lengthen the inner thighs up towards the inner heels, towards the inner ankles. Just softly and quietly, find that length, find that action in the legs. The belly is soft, the chest is broad and soft. Throat quiet, face quiet. And just allow the breath to be smooth. All right, let's cross the legs. If you're on a chair, that's fine. You can do that as well. Just cross the legs. So bending the knees and having a cross leg position, knees should be floating back towards the wall. And then change the cross to the other side. Keeping the belly soft, back of the neck long and quiet, face soft, throat soft, even breath. And then let's roll up to the side and take your head blanket and place it at the end of your mat. If you, most people will need their blanket to be a double fold like that. Um, depending on how much uh, tension you have in your shoulders, you might even need it threefold. Okay, and then you just lay yourself out, bring that blanket all the way into the base of the neck, not under the shoulders, and then lay yourself down for Shavasana. Starting with bent knees, just slightly lift the pelvis and move the tailbone towards the heels. And before you extend your legs, also check that the shoulder blades are moving towards the sacrum. So shoulder blades towards the sacrum, you can take your thumbs and shift the buttocks towards the heels, then extend your legs. Don't be touching any props or even the wall. Be warm, so if you feel that it's a bit cool where you are, have a blanket to cover you or a jumper. And then again, come to your breath. And notice your breath. Just observe, be an outside observer. Not to action anything, not to do anything in this particular part of the class. It's more about learning about yourself, learning about your body and your breath. Is your breath even? Do you see that your in-breath is longer than your out-breath? Or perhaps it's the other way around. But what you can do here is just work to soften the areas of your body. So release and surrender starting at the crown of your head. 
and just work down towards the feet and the toes. Just softening as you go. And as you soften, you might notice that the breath just moves down. It's got more freedom of passage as you release. And feel free to stay on a little bit more in Shavasana, but it has come to the class has come to an end. So the way we finish off Shavasana is to bend the knees, bring the hands onto the navel, and just be there for a breath or so. Then you can roll over to your right, take an arm under your right ear. And then quietly press the top hand down into the floor to bring yourself up. All right. Thank you, everybody. Feel free to stay on in your Shavasana.